हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी चैप्टर सेवन ऑफ इंग्लिश लिटरेचर द नेम ऑफ द चैप्टर इज लिटिल वुमेन व्हिच इज रिटन बाय लुइसा मे एलकॉट एंड दिस इज एन एक्सेप्ट और ए पीस ऑफ एक्सट्रैक्ट टेकन फ्रॉम ए बिग नॉवल स्टूडेंट्स एंड द नेम ऑफ द बिग नॉवल वॉज ऑल्सो लिटिल वेमेन नाउ स्टूडेंट्स what do you come to know or understand about this particular title so as the title says little women so it's obviously uh, we are talking about women so we are able to uh, when we will study this chapter we will come to know more about it but getting into the chapter before getting into the chapter studying the chapter it's necessary also uh, i just want to give you a glimpse uh, about the writer uh luisa may elcott the name of the author of this chapter little women is luisa may elcott students and i would like to share you some things now uh, this is the real picture of luisa may elcott and uh, as you could see and uh, she was uh, born on uh, november 29th in 1832 in german town pennsylvania in united states of america she died on 6th of march when she was of the age of 55 only and he and she died in boston in massachusetts states of usa and now she is buried in a, a cemetery or a burial place or graveyard you can say the name of the graveyard is sleepy hollow cemetery cemetery is the place where dead people are buried students and this cemetery is in concord city of massachusetts states of united states of america and she was a wonderful novelist she has written wonderful novels uh, she was an american writer and basically she has written both the kinds prose and poetry and uh, students Uh, as you could uh, as you just saw that the name pen name of this lady is am barnard so what do you come to know by the term pen name students the word pen name means that this particular person real name was something else what was the real name the person's real name is luisa melcott and it happens when writers uh, uh, or even in uh, the film industry we see that uh, many of the heroes actresses and act uh, actors and actresses they keep different names the real name is different but they keep different names so that uh, people do like that like those names and uh, people know them by that name only so her pen name luisa melcott's uh, pen name was am barnard and the real name was luisa may alcott only now i just want to move ahead uh, with the term uh, pen name students uh, you must be knowing uh, this person this person is uh, is a renowned world famous and uh, india's one of the m- most famous actors over here and is you know this person by the name of dilip kumar but do you know students that the real name of dilip kumar is not dilip kumar but his real name is muhammad yusuf khan same way if we see this one you must be knowing certainly knowing uh, this person this person's name is gulzar you know this person's name is gulzar and he writes uh, songs and dialogues for indian hindi movies and uh, he writes many urdu poetry also and uh, his real name is actually sampuran singh kalra now coming to uh, when we are obviously studying so we uh, i want to just tell you uh, w- about one indian writer munshi premchand and uh, munshi premchand is one such uh, person who has written uh, his literary works uh, both in english and hindi too students but do you know that uh, this wasn't the real name of this person 
the picture you have seen and I hope you must have uh, studied some of the stories uh, of it uh, written by Munshi Premchand and the real name of Munshi Premchand was Dhanpat Raya Srivastav. He, whenever he wrote his different uh, things, different novels, stories, he wrote it by the name of Munshi Premchand and this is uh, the name which with which he was actually most famous for. Now coming back to uh, the chapter Little Women Students, let me tell you this was actually a novel and this was actually published in 1868. This was a novel and it was published in 1868 students and uh, Little Women with the name Little Women and the story, the whole story is actually set in the Alcott family home and uh, that's the name uh, of the family name, the surname of a family, Alcott family and uh, the family lived in the orchard house in Concord, Massachusetts and obviously we people when make stories, uh, when the writers make stories, they know on which topic to make in so they grab in ideas from the world, from the society so, Louisa May Alcott took this story actually from this particular family. Now, this is the real thing. What's more stunning over here is that uh, and is loosely based on Alcott's childhood experiences with her three sisters. So, uh, we come to know that uh, she had three sisters, Abigail May Alcott, Nirikar, then... Uh, Elizabeth Sewall Alcott and Anna Alcott Pratt. Now students, the novel was well received at that time and it was very popular and is still popular today, both among the children and adults and many movies and uh, many plays have been done on stage and many movies have been done, films have been made and uh, the appearances have been done both on television, on stage, on movies of this particular novel. So we are what we are going to study today is actually an excerpt of this big novel, Little Woman. So students, let's start this chapter and uh, let's read this and come to know what all this chapter is about. Hello students, today we will study ahead in this chapter, chapter 7. I explained you about the writer who is Louisa May Alcott and now we are going to study about this story which has been taken from a novel, Little Woman. Now students, uh, it begins with somewhat like Laurie lay luxuriously swinging to and fro in his hammock. Uh, dear students, uh, Laurie is a person lying in the pic you could see over here. Just in the house you could see if you could see it over here. There is a man over here. This man was lying luxuriously, pleasurefully, lazily in his hammock. What you could see on which he is resting is called a hammock. You might not be able to see the proper image. So I want to show you how does it actually look like. So it's hammock is somewhat like this. Suppose if it's at home. So it uh, can be suspended from two different rods and it can a people a person can rest on it. Now this is one an open one which uh, is generally used People generally use it when they go for camping and they tie it to, to different ends. Uh, for example, the best way when people go for camping is to tie uh, diff on two different uh, trees and they can lay down in it. So it's a lovely one over here. This is called a hammock students. Now coming back students over here. So he was lying in his hammock. One warm September afternoon. So the month was September, it was afternoon and he was lying lazily in his hammock over there which I showed you. 
and he was wondering what his neighbors were about. So, who were the neighbors over here? These ladies, which you see in this picture, are the neighbors over here. And he was thinking, what are these ladies up to? But he was too lazy to go and find out. And he was in one of his moods for the day and uh, he wanted to just lie down and be lazy. And he had been both unprofitable and unsatisfactory. He was unsuccessful and unsatisfactory and he didn't do any work that day. And he was wishing that he could live it over again and if something could get out of it. The hot weather made him indolent. As the month was of September, it was afternoon. It was not a weather, pleasant weather actually uh, for him. So uh, he was just trying to rest over there. It was a hot weather. And he was trying to rest students. And uh, the hot weather made him indolent. Indolent students means lazy. And he had shirked his studies. He had avoided or neglected his studies and tried Mr. Brooks' patience to the utmost, to the extreme. And he was displeased. And he displeased uh, Mr. Brooks' patience. And he was displeased by it. And he displeased his grandfather by practicing half the afternoon. Now, students, he also frightened the maid servants also who came to work out of their wits, which means they were utterly frightened. These maid servants were utterly frightened. They were scared by mischievously hinting that one of his dogs was going mad. So this was his one of those mischievous activities that uh, he told these maid servants that one of his dogs had gone actually mad. And there's a chance that a mad dog can bite anyone. And so this uh, brought in the fear in the minds of the maidservants. And after high words, after big quarrel, students, the stable man or the person who is in charge of the stable where horses are kept, students or the caretaker of horses, students is also called the stable man. So he had also some quarrel with the stable man about some fancied neglect of his horse. Fancied means some wanted neglect of his horse. He was just up uh, for quarrel and he just uh, quarreled with the stable man also. He had flung himself into his hammock and uh, he was lying there luxuriously. He was just lying over there resting lazily over there and doing nothing and when the sounds of the voices disturbed actually when these ladies were passing by and he was just disturbed by the sound of uh, the voices of these women these ladies now moving to the second page of the chapter students it's written what in the world are those girls about now now, Laurie started thinking, what are these ladies up to? And Laurie thought, opening his sleepy eyes, he was lying lazily, students in his, uh, in his hammock. So, uh, he just uh, opened his sleepy eyes uh, to just to have a good look who the people were. And for there was something rather peculiar, something special in the appearance of his neighbor, of his neighbor students. Now, each of these women wore a large fluttering, flapping hat, students. Flapping means fluttering hat, which could actually uh, blow in the wind. And a brown linen pouch, which was slung over one shoulder and carried a long staff. So, you could see in the picture, there is a lady over here, which is carrying the staff. And there is a bag also hung on to her shoulder. Now students, moving ahead, Meg had a question 
and uh, jo a book so meg had a cushion also and she also had a book now beth had a basket and amy a portfolio so beth had a basket and the little girl seemed to hold something which was a portfolio my dear students portfolio is a set of photographs or you can also call it a photo album now all these women all these ladies walked quietly through the garden and out at the little back gate and began to climb the hill that lay between the house and the river between the house of lorry and the river no well that school said lorry to himself no he said you know really that school that these ladies are going for picnic he says ahead in the sentence in the lines given over there you could read over there to have a picnic and never ask me he also wanted that uh, he sh- should have been asked for the picnic and they can't be going in the boat and they shouldn't be going in the boat and for they haven't got the key the thing is this that uh, these women seemed as if they were about to use the boat and uh, for a ride for uh, the problem was that they didn't have the key the key of the boat and for they haven't got the key perhaps they forgot it it seems and i'll take it to them and uh, this was said by lorry and uh, he thought that and to see what they are up to what uh, they are going for actually and uh, though possessing half a dozen hats it took him some time to find one so lorry had actually a lot of hats a dozen hats and he took some time to find the one actually uh, and then there was a hunt for the key so he just uh, started then the first he was finding the hat which one to wear the hat which one to wear and then he started he started finding the key which was at last discovered in his own pocket only and so that the girls were quite out of sight now the these girls these women had actually left that place and uh, had gone a bit far when he leaped and he jumped over the fence students and ran after them and taking the shortest way with which he, uh, he can actually catch these uh, ladies students so taking the shortest way to the boat house students he waited for them it's written over students he went it's written taking the shortest way to the boat house now students uh, what is boat house students boat house students is a place uh, simply like a garage in which you uh, stand or park a car in your house but what about people who are having boats so they park their boats in the private area so that particular private area is called boat house students i have some pics of the boat house which i would like to share you students here you could see that uh, this is one house and uh, over here you could see easily there's a big place over here this is uh, you, you could easily see that this is a boat house a boat can go inside and then it is a part of one person's property so just next to it if you see is the seating room is the sitting room or you can say it's the living room over there so uh, it's like this now students uh, i have one other if you see there are two over here and uh, they have just shut it down the person had shut it down so there are shutters over here when the shutter will open then only uh the uh, the boat can be taken out students uh, this is uh, this is how somewhat it looks from inside in the boat house so the water even is present inside 
the boat house uh, area and boat can come inside which is actually a part of a building or a house which is made basically uh, it seems of uh, wood over here it could be uh, other uh, forms also students so we see this is actually a parking space here we see uh, this one is the big one then just next to it you could see the other one then next to it we could see three at least over here and you could see that there are two boats already standing over there sorry my students there are th rather three you three over here it seems and uh, this one uh, which is on the right most is the blank one it means the person over here uh, one person has taken the boat from this boat house so this is the boat house students where people park their boats those uh, who have uh, lots of money they can uh, buy cars and they can buy boats too or they can buy steamers and they can park it over here now student let's move ahead in the chapter it's written taking the shortest way to the boat house he waited for them and to appear and so he just waited uh, and he just wanted to appear before them but no one came and he went up to the hill to take a, to take an observation to take a look from over there where these ladies had gone so a grove of pines pine students means pine trees covered that part of area and from the heart of this green spot or the group of tree students was actually a clearer place and from that green spot came a clearer sound than the soft sigh of the pines sigh means actually uh, which is the uh, taking uh, its deep breath students which we actually breathe in and uh, breathe out but when we are talking over here uh, sigh of the pines it means actually wind which is blowing through the trees or the drowsy chirp of the crickets drowsy means or the low voice of the crickets cricket students my dear students means in hindi which we call it as jhingur now students here's a landscape here's a scenery thought lorry peeping uh, through the bushes he was watching through the bushes and looking wide awake and good natured already it was rather pretty little picture for the sisters sat together in a shady nook shady nook nook means corner in a shady corner with sun and shadow flickering over them and uh, a bit of sun and a bit of shadow was uh, sparkling or just shining over these women and the aromatic wind or the fragrant wind were lifting was lifting their hair and cooling their hot cheeks and all the little wood or the forest my dear students people were going on with their affairs with their work as if uh, these were no strangers but were actually old friends now one of these women's name was meg so meg sat upon her cushion and she started sewing daintily or delicately with her white hands and looking as fresh and sweet as a rose in a pink dress among the green among the green students means among the green trees Beth was sorting the cones that lay thick under the hemlock. Hemlock students is a poisonous plant of Europe of parsley family with a purple spotted stem or fern like leaves and uh, small white flowers which have unpleasant smell. Students that is called hemlock. 
it's somewhat like uh, as we have in india over here as dhatura over here which we know in uh, which we know in hindi as dhatura so hemlock is that kind of thing it's uh, a poisonous plant uh, which people generally have it uh, in a toxic way as over here we take it so it's a poisonous plant students i would like to show the pick this is the uh, poisonous hemlock students okay and uh, i told you that uh, this is uh, this plant actually has a purple spotted stem so in the topmost uh, pic uh, picture you could see over there that the stem has spotted purple stem over here now coming back to the tech students let's move ahead so beth was sorting the cones over there that lay thick under the hemlock cones obviously of the tree uh, fruits of the tree that had fallen over there for she was making pretty things with them and amy was sketching a group of ferns and jo was also knitting as she read aloud students as a shadow passed over the boy's face as he watched them feeling thought that he should or he or he ought to go away because he was an uninvited person he wasn't called by these people yet lingering yet waiting because home seemed very lonely he was just lying over there he wasn't enjoying over there although he was lying lazily in his hammock but yet he was not enjoying over there he wanted to enjoy so yet waiting because home seemed very lonely and this quiet party in the woods over here so it was more attractive to his restless spirit what he wanted to and he stood so still that a squirrel busy with its harvesting or collecting work which she was doing ran down a pine tree close beside him and saw him suddenly and skipped back scolding so shrilly so sharply that beth looked up and espied espied means watching from behind the wistful face or the longing face of lori behind the birches birches uh, students is a slender heart tree and uh, it has a thin uh, bark on peeling it just uh, it's a kind that bears catkins so it's something like a bushy kind of thing uh, a hairy kind of thing that the bark actually is made of and uh, that is usable uh, for burning wood actually so it's good for burning so wistful face behind the birches and beckoned with a reassuring smile beckoned students means he nodded with uh, he, he just uh, nodded and signaled these ladies gestured these ladies with a reassuring smile and the ladies to uh, gave a comforting smile to him and uh, he was also accepted uh, between these women who were over there to enjoy their day in a picnic with this we come to the end of this chapter students thank you